Hey everyone, just another quick update. I am at my chiropractor's office. I'm about to have uh, an appointment with my doctor. And I have been listening this week to We Are Free by Tracy Chi. And this is really, really interesting. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I've cried at pretty much every chapter though. This is the story. It's a multi-focus story, a multi-voice perspective of younger kids, uh, well, younger teenagers and, and middle older teens who were in the Japanese concentration camps, the relocation camps. Um, and each kid is telling his or her story from their perspective. And it's read, the audiobook is read by multiple people. So you get different voices for each character. And it is so far just absolute gut punch after gut punch. Um, really, really nice prose. Each kid is totally different. Um, they're all a really tight group of friends. It's I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I think I'm about five or six chapters in, five or six perspectives in. Loving it so far. Um, I, I think it's going to be another emotional wrecker, though. So I, I may have to take breaks at it because I'm just finding that I'm not in a place always where I am ready to read something that emotionally... Uh, devastating. But um, so far, excellent book. And uh, when I get out of my appointment and I have some more reading updates, I will give you guys another update. I am out of my appointment and uh, he worked on my, he's been working on my um, frozen shoulder. Uh, last month was the first time he, he started trying to help me with it. So I got another treatment today and had to work on my sacrum, my piriformis muscle, my hips. Uh, my right side is just kind of a mess, which explains a lot of the nerve pain that I've been having and my lack of mobility and flexibility that I've been having. And I told him that I was having right knee pain and he pressed on a couple of points and, and moved my, my leg a little. And he's like, yeah, you can, you feel how, how limited your motion is. I'm like, yep. And I'm feeling it in my knee right now. He goes, yep. He goes, so I think I can help you with that today. So, um, I'm really happy that I was able to get an adjustment today. And I will be going back to him in a month for a follow-up. And so now I'm just going to be headed home and I'm going to be listening to We Are Not Free more on the way home. And it is, um, it's about a half hour drive, could be longer. There's a lot of construction around here. And the, the way that I normally take is heavily under construction so I can technically take it but it might double my commute time so if I'm just more interested in listening to the story than I am to getting to my destination then I'll do that and if I really want to get to my destination I will try to take some other way but my my only known alternate route um, that I tried taking down here also construction so I'm not sure it's gonna be an adventure we'll see where I end up today I am listening to We Are Not Free. I don't know how far, I think I'm about halfway in the book. And I, I, mm, this book makes me so angry. And then it killed one of my favorite characters so far. I don't know why I'm listening to this at work because this book keeps making me cry. Literally, I'm not kidding. Almost every single chapter, I end in tears. This book is so good. Oh my gosh. It, oh my gosh. But yeah, just killed off one of my favorite characters. And it was not one that I was expecting. There's a couple that I, like, I'm, I'm not expecting, expect, I'm, I'm expecting. I'm, I'm not going to be surprised if it happens. I don't want it to happen. I, I'm loving every single one of these characters. <sighs> this is brutal. 
lead in here or yeah, yeah. yeah I'll let Janet lead in and lead you. I'll let Janet set you up and then you can go. Yeah. yeah. So okay. as you all know we've been working on the IPSM tool which is a bot <coughs> Corporate nature friendly. So I, I don't have my earbuds, so I'm really sorry if the sound is um, not great out here, but I was absolutely roasting in my office building, running around like crazy, and I had to come outside and breathe a little bit. Uh, so I thought I'd do a quick reading update. I, I finished We Are Not Free. I think it ended up being like 14 different perspectives, if I'm remembering it correctly. I thought it was going to be like maybe five or six. Oh my gosh. I, I don't even know how to talk about it when I get to my wrap up. It was so incredibly powerful. It was so infuriating. It was so heartbreaking. I cried so many times. I, it's, it's just, you know, there are fiction books that will, you know, absolutely rip your heart out. But when there's a book that is a fictionalized account of true history that you know was drawn from the experiences of real people, it, it's, it just hits harder. It hits totally different. And that's what this one was. But it was so incredibly well done. Each voice of each character was so unique. And I really felt like each character was an individual with hopes and dreams of their own, with worldviews of their own, with frustrations and joys of their own. Just uh, am amazing. It was amazing. And I, I listened to the author's note at the end and it just added so much more to the experience, even, even after such an incredible novel. So highly, highly, highly recommend We Are Not Free by Tracy Chi. Hey guys, it is Friday night. Uh, eight o'clock. I am totally wiped out. I'm exhausted. I had an absolutely insane week at work. Physically very, very demanding. I am not used to this. It's gonna, it's gonna be like this for a while. Uh, every other week is probably gonna be absolutely crazed. I got almost no filming done, so I don't know it, what I'm even going to have for a reading vlog this week. But I did start a new book. It is by, I think, Matt Haig, H-A-I-G, I think. And it's called, if I remember right, How to Stop Time. And I got three pages in. <laughs> and I'm realizing on the weeks that I'm at work, the only reading I'm going to get done is if it's an audiobook. And my week's when I'm home, I think I'm more, way more likely to physically read. So I'm going to have to try to like get my Libby order schedule to somehow kind of coincide with that so I can get a new audiobook basically every other week. But for now, me and Rory, or Rory and I, I guess, are going to have a little dinner and then go to bed. Isn't that right? Isn't that right, Rory? Boop. Boop. All right, I'll see you guys later. I think you should read before you die. And those were just some of my favorites that I had read, but it wasn't like the 100 best YA books of all time. To make a list like that is really making a statement, so I want to be very mindful of how I would really construct a list like that, maybe in a year or two from now.
have some Doritos. Good afternoon, everyone. It is Sunday at 3.18 p.m. I am just logging into work because of course I am. Um, I worked a little bit yesterday morning, which is obviously Saturday because Saturday comes before Sunday. That's how calendars work. Um, I choked on a Dorito. My life just flashed before my eyes. Oh my gosh. Why, why am I trying to snack before I film? I know that that doesn't end well. I have tears running everywhere. Oh, holy cow. Um, anyway, I logged into work yesterday morning because I, there's just no way I was going to get all my actual work done. The weeks that I, I'm at the office, I feel like I get nothing done. I was so insanely busy and I felt that I was completely unproductive. I absolutely hate that feeling. I hate being busy and unproductive. It's like the worst combination. Um, so I have a... I have one more task to get done today and it's something that I need to sit and think about and work through and it, it's like a quiet time project. I am just not going to get the chance if I don't do it on the weekend. So here I am, choking, dying, all for some Doritos. Oh. Um, so I got the editing done on my vlog for this week so far. It is 14 minutes long. That's the saddest vlog I've ever made. I I got an entire book read and, and it was a significantly decently long book. <clears throat> I just had absolutely no time whatsoever to like film any of it. So I have, like I said, I have 14 minutes. <laughs> like, do I even post that? Like that feels, <clears throat> that feels so insignificant. Um, so I don't know. This is, this is me just filling time. This is just, this is just fluff now. Um, I have Monday off. So of course I work both days of the weekend if I have a day off. Um, <clears throat> I might try to do a little filming tomorrow. I have to go shoe shopping because I need new tennis shoes because mine are just worn to pieces and for as much as I am actually physically moving now it's they're not it's not enough to keep my feet from being very angry with me at the end of the day I don't know I might film a little bit of that usually I end my vlogs by like Saturday night Sunday morning but I don't know I might have to adjust on this one um, but yeah, I am, I'm now reading Matt Haig's How to Stop Time. <clears throat> I had the ebook copy of it from Libby and then I looked at it again and Libby also has the audiobook and the audiobook had no hold time on it. And I was like, return the ebook, <laughs> go for the audiobook because I just know I'm not going to have any time to physically read. I did. I did like though in the first... I don't even think it was the first chapter. I think it was the prologue. He's, he's describing what he has, which is a medical condition that causes him to age incredibly slowly. So he's not an immortal. There's nothing supernatural about it. It's just a genetic condition. Um, <clears throat> and I forget the name of it. They, they give it a name and they compare it to an actual genetic condition where you age very, very rapidly. So it's the antithesis of that. So he's born in like 1541 or something. But as he's describing it in the intro, he's like, we, you know, I, I age like a decade for every like hundred years or something. And he's like, you know, we get gray hair because there's more than just him that, that have this condition. We get gray hair, we age, we get arthritis, we get, you know, cataracts, we get the blurry eyes. It just takes way, way, way longer for us. He's like, so it's not like I'm some sexy vampire or something. And I don't know why, but that line just made me laugh. 
I don't know when this was written. I don't know when this was published. So I don't know if that was intentionally a shot at the sparkly vampires of the Twilight series or if it was just the fact that people seem to have taken what should have been a very terrifying thing and tried to make it sexy um, <clears throat> over the centuries. But it, it just made me laugh. So, so far the story is modern day, but he has flashbacks, um, things that remind him of something, and then he'll have a flashback to um, his childhood, to his, the woman that he fell in love with in London, um, <clears throat> different parts of historical, historical things, the, the Great Fire of London, Napoleon's rise and fall, um, the witch trials of the Americas, the, uh, you know, just all of those things that he was physically present for and survived. Um, so I, I'm now I'm only maybe like three chapters in so far. Very interesting. The writing style is very clean, very easy to follow. It is told in first person. <clears throat> is it told in first person? Golly, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I can't even... I'm supposed to be napping right now, to be honest, but uh, I'm like, I have to get something done. Yeah, it's told in first person. Why, why did I question myself? Anyway, yeah, it's told in first person because he's, he's basically going through like what's happening in the moment and how he feels about it. Like when he runs into somebody from a job that he applied at and then he'll flash back and he'll, he'll talk about what he remembers, what he saw, how he felt about whatever incident that reminded him of. And uh, I'm, I'm interested so far. There's a secret society aspect to it because the world isn't really ready to know that there are essentially immortal beings. You know, they, they can be killed, they can be starved to death, they can be injured. You know, they're not, they're not like vampires at all in, in, in the comparison of they don't age, they are, you know, have super strength, you can't kill them, you know, unless you do something very special and very specific. It's just people who just age very, 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 very slowly, but they're still susceptible to, um, <clears throat> to mortality, basically. And there's a secret society called the Albatross. They're called Albatross. Albatrosses, Albatross I. Because at the time that the society was created, it was believed that albatross birds had an incredibly long lifespan. They come to find out it's like 60 years or something. And, you know, they could have picked like sharks or turtles or tortoises that live hundreds and hundreds of years. But they picked the albatross. And they call humans without this medical condition mayflies. <clears throat> Which, frankly, I feel is the perfect name. Um, and so there are a number of people. There is a secret society that protects the knowledge of their existence. They can't stay in one place for too long because people start to notice that they're not aging. Um, they have to get new identities throughout the years because you can't have a record of somebody for decade after decade after decade after decade after century after century with the same name, the same face, yada yada yada. <clears throat> but as part of that, they have to abide by some of the rules, which is rule number one, don't fall in love. I mean, that's kind of an obvious one. And I'm sure that nobody's ever followed that rule entirely. Um, they can't talk about their condition to people. The first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. And if people find out about their condition, they get offed. So I'm interested in the secret society aspect. Um, I'm interested in the, it's already talking about the psychological aspect of what that does to you when you can make no close human connections because you're going to lose them in what to you is a very short span of time, or you're putting their life at risk because the secret society might take them out. How you cope with such an immense lifespan that you, you really can't process what that would feel like to live an entire lifespan like that. And to see the entire world change around you time and time and time again. 
and just feel like you don't have a connection to the rest of humanity because of that. And, and you don't really have a connection to these other albatross because you can't, it's even more dangerous to have more than one of you in one place. And so I think it's really, really interesting concept here. And I'm excited to see where the story goes. So apparently I'm doing this thing where I have put books on my want to read list and run through them in like Libby and put, you know, different holds on them depending on how long out they are. <clears throat> and then completely forgetting what they're about or that I had ever heard of them before or that I put them on my to be read list. And then when they come up, it's just a mystery. And so I have not reread the synopsis of the book because I'm like, I put it on my list. I must have wanted to read this for a reason. Let's just see where this goes. So even though I'm, I'm very much a mood reader, I'm going to go with a mystery. It kind of feels like when you go to a bookstore and, you know, there's usually like a table or there's, there's a shelf that has books that have been wrapped in brown paper or white paper and there's just something very very vague written on it you know um an atmospheric mystery in the heart of london or um a love story across time or you know a coming of age from the perspective of an immigrant something like really vague and you're not supposed to know too much about the book it's supposed to be like blind date with a book that kind of a thing apparently that's what i've decided to do with my uh my to be read list and um, this is this is gonna be an experiment. We're gonna see how it goes. So, um, yeah. So uh, I also have. I just got another one. Oh, um, Agatha Christie's Death on the Nile. That one I I own. I bought that in Chirp. And I'm. It's just at the part where it's like introducing every single character, and apparently there's a ton of characters. So I have to like be consistent. I think with listening to this, or I'm gonna completely lose track of everything. So I'm gonna try to be doing Death on the Nile as well. And then I just a few minutes ago got a notification from Libby that an ebook that I had put a, a hold on had come in. <clears throat> I don't know, I might have to push the hold on that one back because I'm already doing two different audiobooks and I have The Three Musketeers physically to still read. And I started the early Ayn Rand short story collection that one I can easily put down short story collections. I feel like you can come and go very, very quickly. Um, but I liked it because it is a short story collection and I can read it at my own pace uh, without having to have like a huge time commitment. So the, um, I think it's The God of Small Things and I can't remember the author's name um, is the book that came in Libby that I might return or push the hold back a little bit. I want to I want to get back to physically reading whether it's an ebook or whether it's a it's a physical book. I just feel like right now it's too much. It's too it's too crazy at work. It's too hectic. The end of the year always is this year is going to be wildly different in terms of my work responsibilities, which is terrifying. It's so stressful. It's just so stressful. So, anyway, I'm going to finish my Doritos. I'm going to try not to die by Dorito because I can't have that my, on my obituary. I just can't. And I'm going to try to get my work project done so that I can actually enjoy my time off tomorrow. So that is all I have for an update. I will try to get a little filming done tomorrow, like I said, so I have more than a 15 minute vlog. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's it. That's it for me today.
Okay, guys, I am about to end this vlog. Um, as you can see, I have a new, whoops, I have a new boom arm for my microphone. Still playing around with it. Um, I just finished filming my October wrap up because it is, uh, I don't know, eight o'clock or something on October 31st. I had a really, really good reading month in October. I had two five-star reads and I want to say three, four stars. Yeah. I'll have to get the stats, but, um, it was, it was great. I absolutely loved it. I got a lot of reading done. Every single one of them was audiobooks. I am quickly learning audiobooks are the only way uh, I think for the next few months, I'm going to get any reading done. I don't have the time and the energy when I get home from work to physically read. I just, I just don't. Um, but to listen to audiobooks to and from work and while I'm doing errands, grocery shopping, um, cleaning around the house, that kind of stuff, it's the way to go. I'm absolutely loving them. So yeah, I... I'm looking forward to November when I, with such a great October, I'm super excited about November because I have already, I'm already halfway through um, How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. I have started Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie, which I expect to be very, very good. And um, just got in Libby, The God of Small Things by an author I still cannot remember the name of, but I will absolutely have it the next time I have an actual reading blog. That one I'm going to, I did check out, um, but I'm going to hold off on starting until I finish um, How to Stop Time. I had a good day today because I managed to get a new pair of tennis shoes and a little pair of like little slip-on boots. It is going to be winter very soon here and I really don't have comfortable boots. Uh, I was shopping for, it felt like hours I really don't know how long it was, but I was, I was burning up. I was roasting. Um, I just, it was killing me. I have very finicky feet. I have, um, pretty flat feet. Don't really have much of an arch. Thank you, dad. I have quite wide feet. Thank you, mom. And so finding comfortable shoes is actually a huge ordeal for me. So the fact that I managed to get a good pair of tennis shoes, they are slip-ons, which is hugely helpful because I found that I tend to tie my laces very, very tight for some unknown reason. And then I'm absolutely strangling my feet a couple hours in my day. Um, so slip-ons, great, love it. And then to get some boots that are both... Uh, I can wear them with nicer clothes, but that they're very utilitarian and I think very hardy little boots. Um, if I ever end up in like deep snow, I'm going to be in trouble because I, I kind of don't really have like good full on tall winter boots, but you know, that's, that's, that's life in an area where you get a lot of snow. Um, you just choose not to be prepared for it and you slog through it anyway. So I am pretty tired. I have a lot of editing to do um, for my wrap up. And then I have the editing to do for this vlog where I will be tacking on today's filming. And then I will be back to work tomorrow, but I will be working from home. So I'll have my lovely home office, which I am so incredibly grateful for. And I will give you guys an update when I have more of my reading goals met. So until then, thank you so much for hanging out with me this week. I hope you are taking good care of yourself and I hope you are being kind to others around you. I will see you in my next one.